This is our news, the weekend edition, and on the broadcast tonight, not meeting the demand. That's what the former Bahamas Mortgage Corporation chair says about the Minnis administration's current housing plan. Plus, a traffic fatality recorded on the streets of San Salvador, and one trade unionist calls for laws to be in place to handle visa payment. News is brought to you by Alive. Good evening, I'm Andrew Knowles and thanks so much for joining us. 10,000 people were looking for homes while the former administration was in power. That's according to former Bahamas Mortgage Corporation Chairman Alex Storr, who recently slammed the Minnesota administration over its housing policy. Our Jared Higgs tells us more. I know that the housing lists while we were there were, I would say, as high as 10,000. So I know that there are a lot of people clamoring to get in those houses, and I think they should try to get them occupied as soon as possible. So Store says given those numbers, the Minnesota administration's housing program that involves offering service lots for as low as $15,000 isn't meeting the demands of the people. I don't think it's enough, and I think that the government, if, you're building, if the government is building 300 houses, of course they have more buying power and more um, bidding power than an individual going to build a single house. And so I think that the government should reevaluate that and they should do the work, um, look at different building methods and try to um, buy, to sell these 300 lots as houses to homeowners. I think that's what they want and that's what they need. The government has sold out 20 lots in two subdivisions as part of its access to affordable homes program, according to Housing Minister Romal Ferreira. Program got off to a rough start, with 85% of people seeking to purchase lots failing to qualify due to financial constraints. Store says there are still subdivisions built by the former government that haven't been filled. Be the Queen's Park uh, subdivision that's right off of Farrington Road. That was the last project we approved as a board at Bahamas Mortgage Corporation. Um, I know I saw the Prime Minister a few days after saying that he has shifted the focus of the government to um, selling lots. He proudly came in and opened um, these completed, I think it's about five houses. Now, since the opening over a year ago, if you go through there now, I think one house is occupied before sitting there vacant, waiting to be vandalized or even worse. Earlier this week, Ferrer told reporters that the previous administration was selling homes for much more than they were actually valued. Store denied Ferrer's claims, saying it was inconsistent with how money lenders do business. Reporting for Our News Weekend, I'm Jared. All right, thanks a lot, Jared. Traffic police are heading to San Salvador to conduct investigations into a traffic fatality on that island that's left one male pedestrian dead. The incident unfolded shortly before 10 p.m. last night. Police say the male pedestrian was walking on Queens Highway near the airport when he was suddenly struck by a, struck by a Ford Explorer. Now, the victim was taken to the community clinic where he later succumbed to his injuries. Police also investigating two separate armed robberies taking place here in the capital yesterday afternoon. In the first incident, police say two armed bandits entered a business establishment on Soldier Road around 4 p.m. and robbed the proprietor of cash before fleeing from the scene. Then just about an hour later, another armed robbery occurred. This time, police say a man was on Montague Beach when he was approached by two males. One who was armed with a firearm robbed the man of his cash. The pair then made good their escape in a black Honda Fit license plate number AP4925. Now police are appealing for the public's assistance in apprehending the four suspects responsible for these robberies. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Central Detective Unit at 502-9991 or 2, Crime Stoppers at 328-TIPS or the nearest police station. Well, as negotiations continue with the union representative for managers of the Grand Lucayan Resort and the government, Trade and Union Congress President Obi Ferguson said there are no laws on how to handle the, the negotiation process, which is a common misunderstanding. The, the misunderstanding in the Bahamas, we have no laws in this country to deal with VSEP programs. That, that's a misunderstanding. Um, we have laws with deal with fairness missile. We have laws which deal with wrongfulness missile. We have laws which deal with breach of employment contract, redundancy. 
We have no laws in the Bahamas. There's no law in England that they have a visa. There's no law in Canada. There's no law in Australia. There's no law in the Bahamas. So when I hear references made of the law, or what you're trying to by law, that is that does not exist. According to Ferguson, there was a time when VSAP negotiations went smoothly in the Bahamas. We have done VSAP programs before with the Right Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram, who was then Prime Minister. And if you recall, there was no issue with him on the VSAP program because it was done where the parties looked at the numbers and we came to an arrangement. That is the way visa programs are done. Ferguson said he is confused as to why this administration can't take a page out of the history book instead of making things difficult for the union and its members. Why it is happening today, it's, it's, it's just, I'm very surprised that we are, we are at this point because these examples were given to the government as to what happened before. So we, even if there's going to be variation due to economic situation or whatever, one would have thought that we'd be pretty near to it. But um, for some reason, we are still negotiating. Still ahead tonight, the wife of the Prime Minister cultivates her own gardening project at a local primary school. We'll tell you more about it when our news, the weekend edition, returns.